around in the audience and feel free to ask questions. I serve on the facility committee. I'm glad to answer any questions you may have or I'll find whoever would know the answer to that question for you. Uh, but as we get started tonight, I'd like to thank you for taking a busy evening uh, and joining us this evening and I will turn it over to Paul Imhoff, Superintendent. Thanks, Ryan. Well, good evening, everybody. Sorry, that's loud. Great to have you here. I'm going to start by apologizing. Uh, we also have a tournament basketball game going on. You might have noticed parking is a challenge, so apologize for that. Uh, this has been on the calendar, obviously, for months and months and months and the tournament basketball game has been on the calendar for days. We're thrilled that we're winning. Go Bears, right? Um, and we're playing Lancaster tonight, and we're assured that this is not going to be our last game. So they promised us a win so we can see them as they continue on in the tournament. Uh, the other thing going on tonight is the dress rehearsal for the musical, and this is a shameless plug for that. So uh, our high school drama department is among the best anywhere, and so this weekend they will be performing The Mystery of Edwin Drood, uh, which is the uh, little trivia here. I'm an English teacher, so you'll have to, to, to bear with me. But it was the last play ever written, written by Charles Dickens, and he didn't finish it. And so as you come to the performance Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, or Sunday afternoon, at, at, at intermission, the audience gets to vote for what the ending is going to be, and the cast has to prepare different endings based upon how you all vote as the audience. And so our kids have been working really, really hard on that. Tickets are still available, and I'd love to have you come out and, 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 and support our kids Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, or Sunday afternoon. So before we get started, I just want to go through a, th a few housekeeping items. Um, tonight, we're going to be together for probably about an hour and 45 minutes. And unlike some of our previous meetings where you had to listen to us talk a lot, you're going to be doing all of the work tonight because we are, we are here tonight really to hear from you. Uh, so we have probably just about 25 minutes worth of, of, of updates and information, um, and then we're going to begin a process of gathering feedback from you about all the different options that are on display around this room and the other room. Um, as we're starting tonight, I want to thank uh, the people who are here with us tonight. If, if you could just raise your hand if you're serving on a building team or, or, as, a or as a member of the Community Facility Task Force. You just raise your hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. We have had almost 300 people volunteer to, to be a part of these important teams, and you're going to hear from Chris Potts in a little bit about the fact that you still have an opportunity to be a part of those teams. I um, want to make sure um, on the tables, and this table does not have one, by the way, there should be a sign-in sheet on all the tables, and we want you to fill those out and put your email address on those. Uh, we're not going to send you a bunch of messages, but that's going to be how we keep you up to date about this process. And so we are trying to gather your, your email addresses so we can so we can add you to our list and keep you updated about updated about previous uh, future meetings. Um, I want you to know that tonight's presentation is being videotaped, and it's going to be available on our website. Um, and we do this for all of our meetings, so friends and neighbors who are not able to be with us tonight. Um, they can watch it on our website, or we have another meeting that will be identical to the meeting tonight. We have another meeting tomorrow morning, and it'll be at 8.30 at Mount View Christian Church on Fishinger. Uh, and so again, that'll be identical to this meeting tonight. Um, wanted you to know that uh, later tonight you're going to hear about a building tour opportunity that's coming up on March 12th, and Chris Potts is going to talk to you about that. Uh, we're going to be taking people who would like to tour a newer building uh, over to the New Albany schools to, uh, to tour one of their new schools um, and to the Pass Foundation to an innovation lab that is uh, very, very near us, near Metro High School. Uh, near Metro High School. Um, also wanted to know, also wanted you to know that Chris Potts and I um, are beginning uh, to schedule community coffees. Um, and we already have over 30 people who have volunteered to host a coffee in their, in, in, in their home in the coming months. To, to, to give us an opportunity to come and give some updates to your friends and neighbors about what's going on in our school district, and then most importantly, to get feedback from you. And we found that, that, that in UA, a great way to communicate with people is to go to their homes and go into their neighborhoods. And so if you'd like to host one of these coffees, it's really simple. We will give you all the instructions, and it's just a chance to invite 5, 10, 15, sometimes 20, 25 people over to your house and we'll just be together for about an hour um, and have an opportunity to learn more about the school district and of course, most importantly, ask questions. Uh, this evening, again, we're gonna talk to you for about 25 minutes 
And I'm going to ask you to hold all of your questions during that time because then the next 45 minutes of, of, of the evening are going to be all about your questions. And we have a system set up to, to answer your questions at that point. Uh, and we're going to have plenty of time to do that tonight. Let me grab my clicker here and start through some of the information we want to begin with. So tonight we're going to review the process to date. Um, what I want to start with, how many of you, for, for, for how many of you is this your first meeting you have come to? Just so I know. Okay, great. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, and so we're going to go through process quickly for you. We're going to talk about some key questions that, that, that have been coming from our community that we want to address. Uh, we're going to talk about the, feed, uh, the feedback process we're going to use tonight, and then we're going to talk about next steps moving forward in our process. Um, just to review, why is this going on and where did it come from? Uh, this all began with the formation of an efficiency team that Andy Geisfeld, our treasurer, put together. And that efficiency team was actually made up of, of community members who have expertise in the private sector dealing with issues of efficiency. And we asked them to come alongside of us and make recommendations to us about how we could be more efficient as a district. And they issued a report, and that, and that report is available on our website. But, but, but in short, one of their findings was this. They said that their single biggest concern about our school district was the age of our facilities. And they recommended that we engage our community immediately in a comprehensive facilities master planning process because they believe due to the age of, of our facilities, if, if we, we did not do that, we would run the risk of our aging facilities starting to cause us to pull money away from education and spend on aging buildings. And their recommendation was we keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing is not the buildings, the main thing is the education of our kids. And they wanted us to, uh, to, to, to protect our funds for that and recommended a comprehensive facilities master planning process to deal with the fact that our buildings are on average over 60 years old. And so we put together a process as they, as they recommended. It's a three phase process. The first phase is already complete and it was the assessment phase. And you're gonna hear Chris Potts in just a minute talk to you about what happened during that assessment phase and what we found during the assessment phase. And again, that, uh, that phase was completed in December. We're now in the second phase of this process and this is the options phase, and thank you for being a part of this phase. And again, you're going to hear from Chris in just a couple of minutes about where all of these options have come from and where, and where we're going with all of these options. But again, these are all coming from, from, from you, our community. And so this second phase of the process is, is going to be complete by next December, and then we're going to enter into the third and final phase of our process, which is the decisions phase. And that is the phase where we're going to decide how do we pay for all this and when do we do it? And we're going to be putting together a team of financial experts from across our community to come alongside of us. And again, our treasurer, Andy Geisfeld, and our Board of Education to help us determine what is the best path forward. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris and he's going to dig into the assessment phase a little bit more. Chris? All right, welcome. In. Obviously, Paul and I have our uniforms on tonight because we're wearing the exact same suit, and that was not planned. Um, so as Paul said, we had a three-phase process, the assessment phase, the option phase, and then the decision phase. In the assessment phase, we had two facility assessments done. One was a free assessment done by the state of Ohio, and another one was done by our team of Moody, Nolan, Perkins, and Will, and Turner. Um, at the same time, during the assessment phase, we formed building teams. Um, and then in November, we presented the assessments to the community at our in community engagement meeting in November. And in that meeting, the estimated cost to repair our buildings as they are today was $188 million, $188 million plus, over 15 years. And what's important to point out with that $188 million is that it does not accommodate the enrollment growth that we are going to see over the next 10 years. We are expecting about a 10% increase in enrollment over, over the next 10 years. And so um, we do annual enrollment projections, and so they're updated every year, but what our projections are telling us is that 10% increase. So that 188 is just the cost to fix what we have. It does not include the additional space that we are going to need at pretty much every school building to accommodate the growth that we are having. And so the assessment phase finished up, um, and we were satisfied with all the community feedback and, and the support throughout that phase. 
And then we entered into the options phase in January. And the options phase really started coming to life in December, actually, during a building team summit when all the building team members came together and started sharing their feedback about ideas and learning about options that could be out there. And so what happened is from that meeting in December, our design team took those ideas and that feedback from you, the community, and created options for our building teams to look at in January. So we had a myriad of options for every building um, based on the feedback from the community. The building teams looked at those options in January, made a lot of comments and a lot of suggestions, and that really gets us to where we are tonight. These options that you're seeing in this room, the middle schools and the high schools, and in that room, the elementaries and Burbank Elementary, are a result of the community and building team feedback and those options being refined throughout the month of January and the beginning of February. And so those options were refined. That's what you see here tonight. And then the most important part about tonight is hearing from you about what you see on these boards. And so at this time, I am actually gonna bring Paul back up who is going to talk about some of those key questions, the questions that have been asked to us throughout this process that we're ready to answer tonight. So. Thanks a lot, Chris. Uh, so we've been getting uh, questions throughout the process and that's, a great, and that's a great thing and we want you to keep those coming. I will tell you the number one question by far that started at the building team meetings we had last month is, when are we gonna see price tags? When are we gonna see price tags? When are we gonna see price tags? Uh, and it goes something like this. People say, Paul, when I go look for a house, I look at the price first. So I can't look at any of these options until you show me the price. And there were people who were even uh, concerned about this and some were even upset about it, to be honest with you. So I wanna to explain to you why we don't have prices yet. Uh, first of all, we aren't to the point of looking at houses yet. Um, and let me tell you my story. I just moved here a few, a, a few years ago. And before I started looking at houses, I sat down with my realtor. And she said, well, how many bedrooms do you need? How many bedrooms do you need? Bathrooms, do you want a garage? And she used that to narrow her search. We have a family of four. She was not gonna show me one bedroom condos, even if that was in my price range. So what we're doing right now is we're narrowing options first, and then we're gonna price them because we need to know what to price. We started out with so many options from our building teams, it was not possible to price all of them in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, putting a price on a new or renovated high school that's several hundred thousand square feet is not a quick process. And so we are a part right now of narrowing options so, so, so that on those narrowed options, we can develop price tags. We understand no one is gonna select final options until we can look at price tags. We don't expect anyone to. But what you're about tonight is helping us narrow options so then we can develop pricing for them. And you're gonna see pricing at the next round of building team meetings, which is the week of March 14th, and you're all invited to join a building team and come see all of that, and at the next community engagement session, which is in April, and again, it'll all be on our website as well. Uh, another question we have gotten is, a number of our sites are very tight because we live in, in, in a community that's built out. Um, and so we've had members of our community who have asked us, is there a way to grow the sites? Is there a way to find more land? And some of these people have, have given us ideas and, and suggestions and said, why don't you look at this? Or, or why don't you look at that? And so we have been taking all of those. And Chris and I, uh, on behalf of the Board of Education, are, are researching all those things that the members of our community have brought forward to us. And, and if any of those become feasible, we will include those in the process and our community would have a full opportunity to weigh in on those and let us know if those make sense to all of you. Uh, the other question we get is, what are the buildings that need the most work? If we had to pick and choose and prioritize this, based upon the assessments, where are we? And I will tell you that based upon the assessments that, that we had done by, by two different groups of people, uh, right now the biggest needs as far as just condition and system, the biggest need in our district is the building you're in. It's the high school. Uh, and then the Board of Education has the power to say yes to that, or to say no to that, or to change it and do something else. But it always starts with, with that recommendation. And so what the Board of Education has set up for us is they want us to have multiple data points on which to base the, the, the eventual recommendation and then their decision. And so as we look at the different data points, the first data point is going to be the feedback from our building teams. Our building teams have been working very, very hard. And so that is the first data point. 
The second data point is going to be those of you who have participated in these community engagement sessions. And we harvest your feedback and we publish that on our website. That is going to be the second data point. The third is going to be the feedback from, from our community facilities task force. And that is a group of, of community members who the Board of Education put in place who actually work in, in this area and understand facilities. So that is the third data point. The fourth data point is we're going to have a, a, a survey on our website after we have final options with price tags. And we're going to ask everyone in our community to weigh in and let us know what they like, what they don't like. And then finally, as if all of that's not enough, we are going to conduct a scientific telephone survey so we also have scientific data about where our community is on this issue so all of those data points and all the data from those five areas will be fully listed on our website and so you will see everything so when the final recommendation and then board action occurs in the fall of this year you will be able to see a line and understand where where all that is coming from and so that is how our decision is going to be made now after that happens, again, then we go into the third and final phase, which is the decisions phase. And that's when we determine how do we pay for it and, and, and when do we do it. Uh, and that recommendation comes from Mr. Geisfeld, our treasurer, who's sitting right here. Wave everybody to Andy. Andy did not get the memo about the suit, by the way. Uh, but anyway, um, and so uh, when, we, when we look at that phase of the process, we are going to have another community engagement session. And so we're going to use the feedback from all of you again. We are going to involve our building teams in that process, so we'll have that feedback. And then Andy is going to form again an advisory team of people in our community who are experts in the finance field, and we're going to use information from them as well. And so the action from, from the Board of Education accepting that, which will be, we'll have the master plan done this fall, and then we'll have that action plan about when to do it and how to pay it, pay for it in the spring of 17. And then this is the fun thing I get to do. I get to talk about the L word, okay? Now, I will tell you, if all of you in this room hate levies, I will tell you that no one hates levies more than superintendents and treasurers and members of the Board of Education. Um, we, we do not like them, but, but, but it is a reality. It is how schools are funded. When we were on the ballot in the fall of 2013, uh, we, we, we actually promised that we were going to be back in November of 17. And that is the next time we are due back for a levy. I'm not going to bore you with, uh, with school finance 101, but the way schools are financed in Ohio, schools have to come back to the voters every three or four years to get a cost of living raise just to keep operating at the same level. And if you want to talk afterwards, Andy can give you some charts and graphs and explain how that works. Um, he would be happy to do that. Um, and so that is the next time where we're due. I will tell you it's likely in November of 2017, and I want to be upfront and honest about this, it is likely it's going to be a combination levy, which is going to be the operating levy we normally have every several years, but also a bond issue. Because there is no option on the table to spend zero on our facilities. Systems are failing. I wish it were an option to spend zero, it is not. So there will need to be a bond issue as well in 2017 to, to, to pay for whatever we decide to do moving forward, forward, whether it's the repair or the renovate or rebuild or a combination of them, that, that, that will likely occur in November of 17. And again, we want to be upfront about that. Um, the other thing, and I'll just put this up briefly, as we talk about bond issues, and Andy put this slide together, if you were at our last meeting, he spent a fair amount of time on this, and we'll spend more time on this at our next community engagement session. But, <laughs> Bond issues are basically just like a home mortgage, and you pay for and, and you pay for buildings over time, typically more than a, a 35 years or so. And so Andy gave us this this example: if we were to borrow 100 million dollars and finance it over 38 years at a 5% rate, it would be about a three mil levy. Okay, just to give people just an order of magnitude about how bond issues work. And for all of us who own homes here. Um, a, a, a one mil levy, a one mil levy, and I'm an English teacher explaining math here, so I apologize, but a one mil levy costs $35 a year per $100,000 of value in our homes. So you all can do the math on what a three mil levy would cost, and that's just for, that, that is just for purposes of illustration. But, but as we begin to talk numbers in March, we, we do want people to know how bond issues work. And so you're going to be hearing more about that, but they are different than, than operating ones. And I think at this point, 
I think I've done all that. So I think it's time to turn it over to Chris. Okay, so as Paul mentioned, we're gonna have about 45 minutes um, for the community, everyone here tonight to walk around to the stations. Our principals will be at each station. And at each station, there's gonna be a packet. And so you're welcome to go to all nine buildings. If you're just interested in one or two buildings, you go to those buildings that you're interested in. And there'll be a packet. And in each packet, the following things are gonna be in those packets. The first is the guiding principles. The guiding principles are really what, what was put together in the fall to help um, guide this process. It's all the things that, that we believe in as a community that are, that are guiding where we go with our buildings and our facilities. The second will be some answers to the key questions that Paul covered, so you have a takeaway tonight on those. Um, there's be assessment information for each building in each packet, so information about the physical assessment as well as the educational adequacy assessment that was done as part of the assessment phase. So just some bullet points for each building in, in every packet about what came out of, those, out of both of those assessments. We will also be reviewing the option categories. And in a minute here, I'm gonna introduce Steve Turks, who is, is our architect from Perkins and Will, who's gonna walk through what you're going to see at each station so you understand what you're looking at and what you're, trying to, what you're trying to provide comments on. So he will walk through what the categories are, which are repair plus, renovate plus, or rebuild. And so he'll walk through what those mean he will walk through, we're going to use the high school as an example because we have done that in every one of these meetings, um, what the options look like there and what those boards mean so you'll know what you're looking at. And so he'll use the, the high school options as an example. And then finally, the last sheet of the packet is a feedback form. That's the form we want you to take the time tonight to fill out whether for all nine schools or just the schools you're interested in. And then there'll be a black basket at each station where you'll leave your feedback form and then we'll take that feedback, compile it, and, and put that right on the website. And so one thing to point out, because I saw a lot of people taking pictures tonight of, of all the option boards, all this will be on the website tonight after this meeting. So every one of those packets that you're getting for every school will be on the website as well, and all that information. And then once we compile the feedback, that will be on the website as well. So the feedback form will be the last form that you fill out and you will have the option to go to each station. If you don't want to stand around the stations and you want to take a packet, come back into this room and just sit at a table and review, you can do that as well. And then, um, as I said there, the feedback form is the most important thing to hear from you tonight. We want to get that back from you. And we will explain the feedback form here in a minute, but I want to introduce Steve Turks from Perkins and Will who is going to walk through what you're going to see at each site. Thank you, Chris. Okay, um, as Chris mentioned, the, all of the options that you'll see, uh, with very few exceptions, were put into three different categories. You can sort of think about that as three buckets if you want to. Um, every board that you'll notice, if you, like, if you scan over at the high school in the upper left-hand corner, you'll find this icon, one of these three icons, either repair, renovate, repair plus, renovate plus, or rebuild. That'll help you sort of key in right away what that option is about. Um, so let me explain a little bit of detail each one of those three buckets, okay? So the repair plus option. You'll remember that as part of um, the process that we've been in so far, that an assessment was done uh, of the physical adequacy of every school, okay? I mean by physical adequacy is, is does a roof need to be replaced? Is the mechanical, what, can, what kind of condition is the mechanical system in? Are the interior finishes in need of repair or replacement, okay? So that assessment was compiled for every single school and for the most part, the repair plus option is addressing those physical adequacy needs, okay? It's not going in and changing spaces so in in the, you know this room for example the cafeteria you're sitting in it would be repairing what's here it's not changing it's not enlarging it uh, it's fixing what is there one of the other key things that the repair plus option does and the, it's the reason for the plus sign is as was already described this evening and in past meetings there is enrollment growth so at the schools where it is needed we are adding space to handle that enrollment growth. That space is being added 
to the six-year number in that 10-year enrollment projection. And the reason for that six-year enrollment number is because the demographers will tell you they have a high degree of certainty, or a very good degree of certainty anyway, with that six-year number. Why? Most of those kids are already uh, born, right? They're already sort of in the pipeline, if you will. Beyond that, the math gets a little fuzzier in terms of those enrollment projections. And um, uh, so, so that's the number that's we use for the, if we, if we need to do an addition to handle an enrollment increase, that's the, that's the enrollment projection number that was used, okay? Um, so those are really the, the two key things for the repair plus options, handling all the repairs plus that uh, enrollment increase. But it's not changing, for instance, it's not going in. We also did an educational adequacy assessment, in which case, you know, uh, for instance, here at the high school, many of the elementary schools, we, you know, the classrooms are really undersized for where we would want them today. It's not addressing that type of a need, okay? What does address that type of need is the next option, which is the renovate plus option. The plus sign again is handling that six year enrollment projection, but it's going back into the building now and not just handling the physical adequacy deficiencies, but it's handling the educational adequacy deficiencies. Does that make sense? So if a room is too small, it's made, it's right sized. Okay, so you want you so the the renovate plus options the footprint of those in many cases gets a bit bigger because we're right sizing spaces as we go through those options. So for instance, if a classroom is too small, we may be taking four classrooms and making them into three in that same footprint. So we just lost a classroom, we have to add it back someplace. Okay, um, so that's the that's in a nutshell that's what the renovate plus option is about. The rebuild option is really pretty straightforward. At any number of our building team meetings, one of the things that came up uh, through those conversations was we should look at an option where this particular school is rebuilt. We'd like to see what that looks like. So a rebuild option is pretty easy to get your mind around. It's a new school, okay? Replacing the existing building. Uh, I do want to add that for all of the schools, all nine campuses, we have gone through and done a, a detailed space analysis of not just what's there, but what should be there relative to that enrollment increase and, and handling the programs, the program needs. And so there is a space-by-space -space accounting. We did look at those, for instance, we lined up all the elementary schools and looked at to make sure we have comparative spaces at, uh, sort of across the board. We did that with the middle schools and of course the high school is a standalone building. Uh, it has, there is, there's only one high school. So all the diagrams that you'll see are based on that program, okay? So when you see blocks of space, the thinking behind that is there in terms of how big that block of space is on those diagrams, okay? So taking the, uh, the high school as an example, uh, Chris mentioned uh, just a couple things about this. Um, I'm going to point you to the bottom here uh, that these are, you know, this, we're doing these at a master plan level, so they're conceptual diagrams. Um, what ultimately gets decided by the school board and implemented uh, may, in fact, be different than these diagrams, but the space, the, you know, this is as much a test fit as anything else. So, in other words, if a new building, a uh, rebuild option, is shown on the site, we want to make sure that it fits, okay? And I'll talk about that a little bit more when we look at the new building options for the high school. But a little bit how to read these diagrams is important. Um, you'll note the, uh, laid over the existing building are, are any number of different colors and line weights. Um, for the, re for the repair options, again, that's mostly going in and repairing what is already in place. The line weight, the way to read that is, it's a thin, solid line. The color within that, for instance, the Varsity Gym, where the game's happening right now, is being repaired. So that thin, solid line is indicating that that space is being repaired. So when the repair plus options, you'll see a lot of thin, solid lines because that's really what those options are about. However, if space is being added, so for instance here at the high school, to hit that six-year enrollment projection, we need some additional classrooms. In this option, we're showing those with a heavy 
solid line and the, sh the color shading within that is a darker color shading, okay? So there's the difference between a, a heavy solid line and a thin solid line. The heavy line is space that's being added to the building. A heavy dotted line uh, is, is, you know, in this case, we don't have enough uh, classrooms as an addition to the end of the, uh, the academic wing, just opposite the media center. We're going inboard in the media center and adding a few more classrooms, so that's a renovated space inside the existing building. So in the renovate plus option, you're gonna see a lot of heavy, broken dash lines that are indicating it's, a, it's, a, it's an area of the building that's getting renovated. Uh, plate rooms are being right-sized, for instance. So again, repair plus option, a lot of uh, lightweight, solid lines. Um, and over here on the left, you can see what this option includes. It's repairing the physical adequacy assessment deficiencies and some minimal right size classrooms. It's a two-story building. This is a, this is a two-story building. Wouldn't get any taller. Uh, we also list here the duration, expected duration of construction and if uh, there's an expected use of modular classrooms to handle uh, needing to take kids out of existing space while space is being re re uh, renovated. Okay? The Renovate Plus option <coughs> is, you'll see now, much more uh, darker uh, shading of color, heavy solid lines. So for instance, a new multi, uh, gym facility, a new natatorium, new academic areas, uh, retaining the, uh, the varsity gym and the visual and performing arts areas of the building, but the, but, uh, the visual and performing arts area being renovated. Uh, the gym is really, uh, the gym that you have is being repaired uh, to the physical adequacy system. So a lot more intensive work uh, in, in this option. The new academic part of the, of the campus would be built to three stories to handle that enrollment increase and the right sizing of classrooms. The duration of this is uh, four years now, two years for the site, four years for the building, and the, and the expected use of modular classrooms is a yes because of uh, uh, dealing with the existing campus and existing building. There are two, for the high school, two rebuild options. I would tell you the, the diagrams for these, there's the, the, it, again, it's a test fit of do the spaces fit on the site? The answer is they do. Uh, the configuration of these is in this option, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, wraps itself around the existing stadium. You can see the dotted line here for the existing footprint of the high school. So the new building would set clear of that. So it could be built free and clear of the existing building. So you'll note down here on the bottom, the use of modular classrooms is very unlikely because we can build a new building and then move the students over, okay? The duration of this goes to two years, three years for the site. The height of this would be three stories. Um, and you can assume in a, in, a, in a rebuild option, you've got the right spaces, the right, they're right size, they're in the real, right relationship to each other. So the real big difference, I would tell you, between rebuild option A and rebuild option B is what happens with the football stadium, okay? Rebuild option, this moves the front door to Zollinger Road, creates a uh, parking lot here. You can see the lobby and the main entry here. Option B does the same thing, although the core academic spaces, uh, classrooms and so forth are really now along Zollinger Road. The football stadium is slid uh, inward uh, 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 on the site and the, and the building wraps around it. Okay, so that's really conceptually the two big differences on the high school. It really centers around uh, how much building mass is along Zollinger and the, and the move of the stadium, okay? So those are the really the, you know, in a nutshell, maybe that wasn't a nutshell, but um, the, the uh, high school options. So you'll see similar diagrams from every single school. So key in on how to read those diagrams uh, so that you can understand what you're looking at. All right, so we're going to get up and move here in a second. One thing I want to make sure everyone understands is that these are just concepts. They're not final design plans. There's no architectural detail in this. 
It's just showing in all nine of these buildings that the space we need fits on the site. Things may move around when we get into another phase of this, but community feedback will be happening at that point as well, as Paul talked about. So right now, we are going to um, release you for 45 minutes to go to any station you want, and at each station, the principals will be stationed at each station, and our design teams will be walking around, answering questions. They will be, all the packets are at each station. The last page, the feedback form. This is just a sample of what we what would love you to be able to do is, asking you if you were to rank the the options where you would think they would fall so on option one if you think the repair plus is the best option you would put that under option one if you think the rebuild a is the best option you would put that on option one and just kind of lay out what you believe are the best options down option one two three based on repair plus renovate plus or rebuild and so that's what we're asking for from the sample feedback form and then at this time, are you waiting to, you want to jump in? Okay. So we're going to let Paul jump in and then we'll release it for 45 minutes. This happened at the building team meeting, so I just want to make sure we've got this clear. Back up a slide there, would you? You see all these blocks, and this happened at the building team meetings. People would look at these blocks and they say, I like that, but I don't want the gym there. I want the gym somewhere else. We don't know where the gym's going to be. <laughs> all that shows is that we know there's room for a gym. So again, we do not need feedback on where the gym goes because we're, no, we're nowhere near that in this process. All that shows is the gym fits, okay? So when we would get to picking an option in the design process, you're all gonna be involved in, 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 in where the gym goes. Tonight is not about where the gym goes. Does that all make sense? So please don't spend time looking at the blocks and, oh, I don't like the classrooms there, I don't like the gym there. We just put them in a spot to show they fit. Is that clear? Can I get a thumbs up if that's clear? Great, thank you so much. Okay. So at this time, you're free to make your way around the stations. The middle school and high school are in this room. All the elementaries are in Burbank are in the East Cafeteria. We are gonna start this timer, so at the end of this timer, we wanna come back in here and end the night. So keep an eye on the clock here. If I could just have your attention for a second, uh, you can stay as long as you like and can continue to ask questions. If I could have your attention, just a couple of minutes, a couple of announcements, and then again, feel free to stay as long as you like, okay? You're listening, thank you very much. Someone is listening. I can use my teacher voice, flash the lights, I don't know what to do here. I just, I just a couple of things. First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming tonight. We're anxious to see your feedback. You will see it on the website as soon as we get it tabulated. Wanted you to know that it's not too late to, build a, to, to join a building team. If you want to be the first one to see the prices, then join a building team. Join all nine. And the dates are right up here on the screen. You, you do not need to tell us you're coming. You can just show up. But these are the building teams, and that is when you're going to see prices. And I know you can't wait to see prices. I can't wait to see prices. So come to the building team meetings, and then the next community engagement session here is going to be in April. The other thing is on March 12th, we have an opportunity to go out and tour New Albany, um, one of their new schools, and we're also going to tour the Past Foundation Innovation Lab. You can meet us there, or, and this will be really fun, we are giving you the opportunity to meet us here on that morning at about 8.30, and when we need you to RSVP, and we will take you there on a luxury school bus, okay? <laughs> We'd be happy to do that. If you haven't ridden a school bus in a while, you are not going to want to miss it. It's a great opportunity, and they have not changed since you were in school, okay? So again, thanks so much for coming tonight. We really appreciate it. Feel, uh, uh, feel free to stay as long as you like to continue the feedback. Have a great evening.